Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this weekly worship video cast for the Mount Lebanon United Methodist Church. As we begin this time of worship today, let's go right to the very verse that I would like to focus upon in our worship this morning. These words from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. From Christ, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Let us worship our God. the body. 
Let us pray together. O God of the crucified Christ, hope of the despised and rejected, open our hearts to your grace. Open our lives to all people. Open our eyes to see you in the stranger. Open our ears to hear your voice in the cry of the poor. Open our hands to serve you among the humble. Open our arms to embrace you in our enemy. Open our hearts to receive your grace. Amen. Start somewhere, why not here? If you gotta start sometime, why not now? If we gotta start somewhere, I say here. If we gotta start sometime, I say now. Through the fog, there is hope in the distance. From cathedrals to third world mission. Double fall to the earth like a crashing wave Tonight's the night The sinners and the saints Two worlds collide In a beautiful display It's all love tonight When you step across the line You can sail across the sea To a city with one Start somewhere, why not here? If you gotta start sometime, why not now? If we gotta start somewhere, I say here. If we gotta.
gotta start sometime, I say now Through the fog there is hope in the distance From cathedrals to third world missions Love will fall to the earth like a crashing wave Tonight's the night Tonight could last forever We are one choice from together Family We're family Oh, tonight could last forever We are one choice from together You and me Yeah, you and me Tonight's the night Our scripture reading for this morning is taken from Paul's letter to the Church of the Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. I will share with you this very important reading, which happens to be my favorite chapter in the Bible concerning the church, after which I will share with you my message for today, which is entitled, Built Up in Love. Let's hear God's word. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean? Except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ might be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, 
joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From Christ, Paul says, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. I love those words from Ephesians chapter 4, 16. As I said at the beginning of this time together, these are some of my favorite words that we have in all of the scripture concerning the church because they really describe for me how the church is intended to work. It's like a body that is joined and held together by every supporting ligament, and that body grows and builds itself up in love only as each part does its work. It seems very sensible to me that this is how the church should operate. And yet, isn't it true that so often we operate in exactly the opposite fashion? Rather than being a body where every part is working together, instead we find that sometimes the church is a body where parts of the church seem to be working against each other. The way that Paul describes for us is so sensible. It's like many of the truths that we can appreciate from our American history. This seems to be a very sensible statement that Paul gives to us. Essentially, it says, cooperation enables success. Division ensures defeat. From our nation's history, we find this same truth echoed time and time again. Remember the old saying from, from American history, united we stand, divided we fall. There was an old colonial flag that had the, the uh, original 13 colonies depicted as a snake coiled to strike. And if you look closely at the body of the snake, you could see the, the symbols for each one of the 13 colonies and underneath of that serpent were the words, don't tread on me. The message that was being declared was, we're all together. We will stand together, even in times of difficulty. In the year 1787, the United States Constitution replaced the old Articles of Confederation and increased cooperation among the states. We know this to be true. Cooperation enables success. If we don't have that, then division ensures defeat. As confirmed by the events of history and by our own personal experience, this is a very sensible statement, and it is a sensible statement that the Apostle Paul shares with us today in Ephesians 4.16. In addition to being a sensible statement, it's also a very biblical statement. In the Old Testament, when the people of God cooperate with one another under God's leadership, they succeed. When they don't cooperate together or they don't follow God, they fail. In the New Testament, this theme is continued. In the Gospels, Jesus sets an example. In Mark chapter 6, he sends his disciples into the community to preach, to teach, and to heal all manner of diseases. He sends them out, notice this, not alone, but in pairs. He knows that there's strength in working together. And in the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost, it descends, the Spirit descends upon a diverse group of people that has already gathered together in one place. You see, the Spirit came at Pentecost upon a united group, and the Spirit further increases their unity by breaking down the barriers of language. That Holy Spirit empowered the early church to go forth in love and in service. Then throughout the letters of Paul, we find this theme echoed. Cooperation enables success. Division ensures defeat. We hear it in Philippians chapter 2, where it says, look out for one another's interests. 
In Colossians chapter 3, it says, love binds all things together in perfect unity. In Galatians chapter 6, it says, bear one another's burdens. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we read that Paul identifies his brother Apollos as partners working together for God. Paul says, we're not competitors. Apollos and I are not at odds. We are partners working together for God. By the time we come to Ephesians chapter 4, we read in that chapter that the church is the unified body of Christ that is built up in love. One body is the image following one Lord. One spirit working through one faith with one hope and one baptism under the banner of one God and Father of us all. But in the midst of this unity, there is also diversity, Ephesians tells us. One spirit, but many gifts. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Today, this very day, we represent many different people with many different gifts, living in many different places at home where you are. But we have one Lord, one body. And in the symbol of this communion Sunday, we are reminded that the communion table unites us all around one table of the Lord from Christ the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Cooperation enables success. Division ensures defeat. Cooperation is the very essence of Christian ministry. Sometimes in the church we use the term cooperative ministry to talk about churches working together. But I think the term cooperative ministry is really a redundant term. It's like saying athletic sports or musical music or theological theology. Cooperative ministry is, is redundant. If we as individuals or as churches choose not to cooperate in ministry, then we must seriously question whether we are actually in ministry at all. Our church is blessed to be able to cooperate with others. We have our Zwickau partnership with our friends in Eastern Germany. We cooperate with other congregations in our Family Promise ministry to the homeless. We had a wonderful report about them at our Faith for Today gathering last week. We are able to partner with other churches through the uh, South Hills uh, Interfaith Ministry, SHIM. We also participate with the churches of our Pittsburgh district in supporting uh, ministry among our, our first and oldest predominantly African-American congregation there at the Warren Church. There are so many examples where we as Christians are working together with others. Why do we do it? Because the words of Paul in Ephesians tell us that we must. From Christ, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
God bless this land Heal our hearts, help us stand In your name, in this place Set us free by your grace God, make us one By your power, everyone Give us hope, give us peace Give us love, make us strong in unity. Of course, one of the ways in which we cooperate is through our giving. 
I give what I have to give, you give what you have to give. Each one of us makes our own gifts. They're not of equivalent size. The scripture says that we each give according to the way in which God has blessed us. But you give your gifts and I give my gifts. And as these gifts come together in the ministry of the church, incredible things happen because we can do together things that we could never do individually. This past week, we had a vacation Bible school where more than 50 children, many of whom came from our surrounding community, they were kids who were not a part of our existing congregation. They came and were a part of vacation Bible school this week. Now, I don't know about you, but it would be hard for me to write a check and fund an entire vacation Bible school on my own. But together, together we can do it. Together we did do it. I would encourage you today, as you offer your gifts to the Lord, and as we receive these gifts, let us pray. O oh Lord, help us each to do our part, each to offer our gift, and as you receive them, make us grateful and use these gifts to build up the kingdom of love throughout the world. In Jesus' name, amen. From Christ, Paul says, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up as each part does its work. The time of our worship is over. The time of our work is just now beginning. Go forward in Christ's name. Amen. <laughs>